Hello everyone, I'm Mauro Donna, and I'm presenting you flood mapping using convolutional neural network. Why flood monitoring? Floods are one of the most dangerous natural disasters, which have huge social, economic and environmental consequences. The use of satellite images is essential in preventing further damages in disaster areas. Unfortunately, the use of optical images is, is discouraged because of two main reasons. It's limited by meteorological conditions, in fact, if there are clouds, the image is not clean, and it's not useful during nights. For this reason, synthetic cover to radar images can be effectively used instead, since they can provide all weather day and night imagery. Let's introduce deep learning. During the last years, deep learning methods have been focused on optical images and text because of the great amount of available labeled data, which led to unprecedented advancement in every related field. However, lately, there has been a lot of interest in applying deep learning algorithms also to such images, and also because of the new dataset which have become available lately. The advancement in deep learning field were also brought by new architectures, different approaches, such as adversarial learning, and new neural network blocks, like attention, which is used in our algorithm, and we can see a representation of this block below in the slide. What is attention? A neural network is considered to be an effort to mimic human brain actions in a simplified manner. Attention mechanism is also an attempt to implement the same action of selectively concentrating on a few relevant things, while ignoring others in deep neural networks. Let's consider an example. Consider a photo representing a group of children. If one wants to know how many people are in the photo, only counting the heads will be sufficient. This means that everything in the photo, except heads, is useless. Hence, you just need to focus on ads. In order to improve the accuracy, current segmentation frameworks rely on additional preceding object localization models to simplify the task, separating it, separating it into localization and subsequent segmentation. It's possible to demonstrate that the same objective can be achieved by integrating attention gates in a standard CNN model. Our architecture is inspired by the famous UNET, where attention blocks are introduced. The model is trained to recognize and output a map of all the water in the image. A final post-processing operation removes all the permanent water using a water layer provided by European Commission's Joint Research Center, returning the final flood map. And on the right, we can see the flow of the algorithm. The input images in DASET are composed of two bands, amplitude and a measure of slope, which is derived from them. The train does that is composed of around 10,000 tiles, to, uh, 256 times 256, of course two bands, taken in Europe and especially in Italy. The test asset size is around 1,500 tiles. Here there are some results. Uh, we can see how, the network, how our network in, is pretty accurate. In fact, on the on the left we have the SAR input, on the, in the center we have the water input, hence the ground truth, and on the right we have the prediction. Our network produces a very smooth result, precise, precise and accurate. Here there are some results which confirm the what I've, what I've told you before. The network is also able to recognize if there's water or there's no water in the in the um, in the image, like uh, it's possible to see in the first line, second column, and uh, in the second line, second column, we can also see how the network is actually better sometimes than the ground truth, and has been able to recognize water also where the ground truth doesn't say that there's water. Here a comparison between an internally developed s one based algorithm in violet and two slightly different versions of the presenting deep learning algorithm in green and red. It's possible to see that deep learning methods are able to find more flooded areas, uh, as we can see in the top image with uh, the thick pieces of water. And deep learning methods are also able to avoid producing flooding maps with holes inside, which is normal for an algorithm like SVM because uh, SVM considers each pixel separately. In conclusion, the presented model has shown very good performance and generalization capability since it has interesting results, even on entirely different areas it was trained on. Really, the architecture has problem with dealing with, with very tight rivers, even if the dataset is not perfect in these cases, as we can see on the, on the right part of the slide. A solution could be to reduce the network depth, 
and the recipe field in order to let the network concentrate on smaller objects. Thank you for your attention.